مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ثم ما بعد to proceed Inshallah today we will be talking about tazkiyah that is what uh, the, the topic is about of the lecture today inshallah and tomorrow as well and uh, before we talk about tazkiyah and before we talk about the particular elements that we will address in our talk about tazkiyah uh, we want to talk about the importance of tazkiyah we want to talk about the importance of the purification of the heart uh, the importance of attending to your heart, the importance of paying attention to the deeds of the heart. And uh, if you want to put this in perspective, we will need to start with a statement from Surah Al-Shu'ara in which uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ uh, this was actually, this came, this particular sentence came in the context of a dua, a supplication by Ibrahim alayhi salam, in which he said, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ And do not disgrace me on the day they will be resurrected. On that day, no wealth or, child, or children will be of any benefit except for one or but one who came to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who returned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart, with a sound heart. So in this particular, within this particular context of this supplication of Ibrahim alayhi salam, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ And do not disgrace me on the day they will be resurrected. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On that day, no children or wealth will be of any benefit for anyone except for one who came back to Allah or who returned to Allah with a sound heart. If that is what it is, then shouldn't it be important? Shouldn't, you know, the, the matter of the purification of the heart be of the greatest importance for us in this life as human beings. This is it. This is what matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. Al-qalb huwa mahalla nazar al-rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-qalb, the heart, is where Allah looks subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if that is where Allah is looking, then should you not be careful about it? Should you not attend to it? Should you not take care of it? If that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at our images, shapes, and forms like the rest of the people, like the people do. The people look at the images and shapes and forms, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at our hearts, looks at our deeds, our actions, including, most importantly, the actions of the heart. The heart is the container of faith. The heart is that piece of flesh that the Prophet ﷺ told us about. There is a piece of flesh in the body. If it is rectified, if it is whole, the whole body is rectified and whole. And if it is diseased or corrupt, the whole body will be corrupt. Most verily, it is the heart. So should we not pay attention to the heart if that is the case? And if it is all about the heart, should we not pay attention to the heart? Certainly we should. The thing that makes this more, even more important for us to take care of is that this is a very personal and individual pursuit. This is a very personal and individual endeavor. No one will be able to, you know, be, uh, to do this for you. Unless you do it for yourself, no one can do this for you. No one can do this, no one can fix your heart, can rectify your heart, can cleanse your heart of all diseases and afflictions. No one can weed out your heart from all the faults and all of the ailments that, that we have in our hearts. A very personal endeavor, a very important endeavor upon which you know, our destiny is contingent, 
uh, our destiny rests on our success or failure in purifying the heart and in returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Think about the individuality of this endeavor. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَ As Allah said in Surah Al-An'am. وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا فُرَادَ You have come back to us, فُرَادَ, alone. Each one by himself, فُرَادَ, from Fard, singular. Each one by himself. You have come back to us, you have returned to us, فُرَادَ, alone. كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ As we created you the first time. وَتَرَكْتُمْ مَا خَوَّنَّاكُمْ وَرَا أَظْهُورِكُمْ And you have left what we have given you, what we have bestowed on you behind your back. وَمَا نَرَى مَعَكُمْ شُفَعَاءُكُمْ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّهُمْ فِيكُمْ شُرَكَاءُ And we don't find with you, we don't see next to you your intercessors that you took as associates with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that you made as associates for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concerning your affairs. لَقَدْ تَقَطَّعْ بَيْنَكُمْ وَظَلَّ عَنْكُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَزْعُمُونَ All ties between you have been severed. All ties between you have been severed and all of your claims are in vain or all of your claims are lost. So, وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَ فُرَادَ كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً Think about your return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, furada, by yourself. And think about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking you for one thing, to come back to him alone, but with a sound heart. With a sound heart. وَنَرِثُهُ مَا يَقُولُ وَيَأْتِينَا فَرْدَ As Allah said in Surah Maryam, that, he, that each one of them will come back to us alone. And that is why the Prophet ﷺ told you, be, uh, be a stranger in this life. Because you will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And there, much of the distance, most of the phases of your existence, the very critical points, when you enter the grave, you are alone. Before you enter the grave, when you are in the sakarat of al maut, the rattles of death, you are alone. And those who are around you are not experiencing, are not seeing your experience are not sharing your experience. It will be your individual experience and you will be alone when that time comes. And when you enter into your grave, you will be alone. And when you get resurrected, when, you, when the grave splits and you uh, depart to the final destination, the hereafter, you will be alone in this part of the journey or that part of the journey. And when you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will also be alone. So why don't you try to be alone here as well? Being alone here as well is that it means what? It means that أن تصحب الخلق الخالق بلا خلق وأن تصحب الخلق بلا نفس Being alone here means that you get rid of all of the distractions. When you are in the company of الخالق, the creator, you remove all the creation from the middle, from the, you know, the, the, the midst of your uh, companionship with the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you are in the company of the creation, you're removing the interference between you and the people, and that is your ego. So when you are with Allah, you are with Allah without the creation, and when you are with His creation, you are with them without your ego. أن تصحب الخالق بلا خلق وأن تصحب الخلق بلا نفس. So you get ready for this journey, this lonely journey, by some practice here in this life. Some practice. You see, our problem is that we're always distracted. We're always distracted by people, events, you know, the busy calendar the busy relationships, we have kids, we have spouses, we have careers, we have families, extended families, and all of the issues that take place amongst the, the extended families, 
and issues related to career and health and so on and so forth. But do, when do we really get to focus on the purification of our, heart, our hearts, the preparation of our hearts for that journey? You know, back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When do we make sure that we are returning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a heart that is sound, qalbin salim? So you do need to have some moments of seclusion. You do need to have some moments of contemplation, which is not going to happen as long as you are surrounded by all of this noise, surrounded by all of those distractions. As long as I am trying to impress you with my speech, and you, each one of us is trying to impress, to impress the, his neighbor by his you know, piety, you know, elegance, wealth. You know, my kids are you know, in medical school. Uh, I, you know, I have this career. I know a little better than them or him, or I look better, or I'm smarter, or I'm this or that. As long as we are busy with all of this, and everybody is trying to impress others, and everybody is trying to you know, find himself uh, a spot where you know, he, he gets the limelights, uh, whether it has to do with his piety, with his you know, ex excellent career, his handsomeness, his uh, you know, body belt, anything. Uh, and, and, and we're always busy with this, or if, even if we are not busy with this, we are busy with you know, the troubles that we go through on daily basis. Our careers, our you know, family lives, health, uh, uh, earning a living, and so on and so forth. So you really have to detach yourself sometimes to do this work, to do this work on your heart, to do this work of watchfulness of your heart, of reckoning of your heart, of examining your heart so that you can start to begin the walk to you know, health and wholesomeness and holiness. Uh, this, is, uh, this is our greatest challenge, that you, that you detach yourself, that you unplug yourself from all of this ambient noise. Some people can do this without physical detachment. Most of us can't. That is why we need sometimes to have some retreat from the people and from all of this noise. And we need to spend time with ourselves because we can't build, up, we can't build those mental walls. Some people can do this. They are, when they are with al-khaliq, they detach from al-khalq completely even if they are surrounded by them. Do you think when the Prophet ﷺ was exhorting his companions, he was actually paying attention, trying to impress his companions, paying attention to what they think of him, or he was completely watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, observant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what he cared about. Did he try to impress the kuffar that he was preaching to? Did he, was, was he considerate of their uh, sort of perception of him or how great he is or was he completely devoted in this pursuit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was certainly able to do this. He was able to build those mental walls. He is with them, but he's not seeing them or not seeing them with his heart, not observing them with his heart, although he can see them with his eyes. But the eyes of his heart are totally focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not those individuals around him, whether they are good or bad, whether they are his disciples and companions or his, uh, you know, uh, the kuffar of, of Christ, his, uh, his opponents and enemies. It, it wouldn't matter. What matters to him, what matters to him is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the companions of the Prophet ﷺ gave us the greatest role models in this regard as well. So it is not impossible for people to do this. And certainly, we do not want people to be detached, unplugged, isolated, and not contributing to the well-being 
of their communities, their societies. So we're not talking about complete seclusion where you detach yourself from everybody and focus on your individual pursuit of purification and focus on rectifying your relationship with Allah and avoiding the people and not working with them. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us that those who mix with people, those who mix with people and tolerate their harm are better than those who do not mix with people and, and tolerate their harm. Because there is no monasticism in Islam. No monasticism in Islam. However, we do need some moments of isolation, sometimes where we actually take ourselves, that is why atikaf is prescribed. And it is not only prescribed in Ramadan in the last 10 days, it is also prescribed in, you know, at all times. You can make atikaf whenever you, you want. You can come to the masjid and have this devotional retreat. A time for contemplation, a time where you could sit down with yourself alone, not in the company of a spouse, child, parent, classmate, business partner, neighbor, friend, anyone, but only with yourself, to hold yourself to account, to monitor you know, your heart and your actions, and to be able to reckon yourself before you are reckoned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, on the day of judgment. So, this is an individual pursuit. And you will walk this path alone, and you will walk it all the way to the end alone. So be careful about it and be attentive to it. Because most of the people are not paying attention to it. So don't be deluded away, don't be deceived by the shaitan and by the busyness of this life and the glitters of this life from walking down that path of purification until you return to Allah with the heart that is sound, that is the only thing that Allah will be wanting from you when you return to him. A heart that is sound, that's the only thing that will be of benefit for you. So the, it is important because that is what matters. It is important because this is an individual experience and unless you take care of it, no one will take care of it on your behalf. It is also important because of this hadith. And I found this hadith to be the most frightening uh, for the people who are heedless, uh, who are in, you know, uh, reckless when it comes to the condition of their hearts. The people who only measure themselves by their apparent actions, their manifest actions. And I have to tell you, that there is no contradiction between the actions of the body and the actions of the heart. The actions of the body need to be also rectified. The Sahaba of the Prophet وسلم, they were, their, their actions were perfect or close to perfect, whether they are the actions of the body or the actions of the heart. We are the only ones that try to create some dichotomy, some contradiction, some conflict between the actions of the body and the actions of the heart. The actions of the body, the good actions of the body are not an absolute indication on the goodness of the heart. Right? But the, because they need to be sincere. Unless they are sincere, then they are not an indication on the goodness of the heart. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will not accept of the deeds except those that are purely for him, purely for him, purely devoted to him. But the, 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 the bad and evil actions of the body, unless there is some, you know, uh, explanation, but generally speaking, the evil actions of the body are an indication of the, uh, you know, uh, the evil of the heart or the corruption of the heart. They are an indication. So you need the 
exterior to be uh, good, and you need that goodness to be for Allah and not for anyone else, so, th so that you, your heart will be uh, sound. But listen to this hadith, which will make you extremely concerned. And if it doesn't make us concerned, then I don't know what could make us concerned. It was reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, حَدَّثَنَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَهُوَ الصَّادِقُ الْمَسْدُوقِ قال, the Prophet sallallahu told us, spoke to us, and he is a sadiq, the truthful, al-masduq, the trustworthy, or the believed, the trustworthy. قال, he said, إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ يُجْمَعُ خَلْقُهُ فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِيرَ لَيْلَةً نُطْفَ Each one of you will have his creation in the womb of his mother for 40 days in the form of a drop. ثُمَّ يَكُونُ عَلَقَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ And then he will be a leech-like clot, an equal period, for an equal period. ثُمَّ يَكُونُ مُضْغَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ and then he will be a piece of flesh, a chewed piece of flesh, or like a chewed piece of flesh for an equal period. And in some reports by an Imam Muslim, there is an indication that all of these phases actually take place within the first 40 days, within just the first 40 days. But that's not the point of the hadith. إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ يُجْمَعُ خَلْقُهُ فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ لَيْلَةً نُطْفَةً ثُمَّ يَكُونُ عَلَقَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ نُطْفَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ The point is that then the Prophet ﷺ said ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ الْمَلَكِ And then the angel will be sent to him فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ he, And he will breathe the spirit into him وَيُؤْمَرُ بِكَتْبِ أَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ And he will be commanded to write four matters. بِكَتْبِ أَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ وَرِزْقِهِ وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ He will be commanded to write down his life term, أَجَلِهِ وَعَمَلِهِ His actions وَرِزْقِهِ His provisions وَشَقِيٌّ أَوْ سَعِيدٌ whether he will be of the prosperous, the successful ones, or otherwise. Whether he will be of the dwellers of paradise, or otherwise. فَوَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ By him in whose hands is my soul. Is, is my soul. إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ حَتَّى مَا يَكُونَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهَا إِلَّا ذِرَاعِ فَيَسْبِقُ عَلَيْهِ الْكِتَابِ فَيَعْمَلُ بِعَمَلِ أَهْلِ النَّارِ فَيَدْخُلُهَا One of you does the works by him in whose hands is my soul. One of you does the works of the people of paradise until there is only an arm span between him and paradise. And then he will be overtaken by his destiny. And he will do the works of the people of the hellfire and he will enter the hellfire. And one of you will do the works of the people of the hellfire until there is only an arm span between him. One of you will do the works of the people of the hellfire until there is only an arm span between him and it, and then he will be overtaken by his destiny, and he will do the works of the people of paradise, and then he will enter paradise. Now, why should this be concerning and frightening for us? Because didn't we come here to the masjid today? These are the works of the people of paradise. Most of us went to Hajj, works of the people of paradise. Most of us pray and fast and so on. These are the works of the people of paradise. But the Prophet ﷺ was saying in this hadith that some people do the works of the people of paradise until there is only an arm span between them and paradise, and then they will be overtaken by that destiny that was inscribed in the book, and then they will do the works of the people of hellfire and they will enter it. This should be concerning for us. Because if, you, if you're concerned about your destiny, if you're concerned about your place in the hereafter, then it is, a, it is not enough that you're doing the works of the people 
of paradise. Don't feel too safe. That is what the hadith is telling you. Don't feel too safe. Don't lose your vigilance. Isn't taqwa about vigilance? Taqwa means vigilance. You have to stay vigilant all the time because there are lots of enemies that can, you know, uh, snatch you away from your, your path, the right path to paradise, to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should stay vigilant because this hadith tells you that you could actually be doing the works of the people of paradise throughout your life and then it would be only an arm span between you and, and paradise and then you will be overtaken by your destiny. But someone may say, why would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want to torture us? Isn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most grateful? Isn't part of this gratefulness to not misguide us after we have worked for his pleasure for so long that he would not misguide us just to be tortured in the hellfire? So how do you explain this hadith? Doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا As in Surah An-Nisa, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابِكُمْ إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ What would Allah do tormenting you? Why would Allah torment you if you are grateful and faithful? شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ You show gratitude and faith. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most grateful, all-knowing. So why would Allah want to torment us? Why would Allah let someone who did the works of the paradise or the people of paradise for his entire life go astray right before he enters paradise when there is only an arm span between him and paradise? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا and Allah is most grateful. But the ayah says what? وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا عَلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most grateful, all-knowing. It's, it's, it's about all-knowing. عَلِيمًا How? Someone who got misguided before he made it to paradise is someone, according to the explanation of the scholars, is someone who was not paying attention to his heart. Someone who was not paying attention to his heart. He was doing the works of the people of paradise. Yes, he had many afflictions, diseases, flaws, faults, troubles in his heart. Self-deceit, self-conceit, arrogance, pride, hatred, envy, prejudice. All of that he had in his heart. And he was not paying attention to all of that. He was going to Hajj every other year. And he was sort of comforting his conscience by this. You know, I go to Hajj every other year. I just came back from Umrah. I pray, I fast. But he was actually doing this to comfort his conscience, not for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was not paying attention to all of the problems that he had and all of the, the disastrous diseases that were infesting his heart, the germs that were infesting his heart. And it is very possible that you see someone, you know, like a bodybuilder who has some fatal diseases, looking very good to you, very powerful, very strong, tall, muscular, but he's got some fatal disease that's about to end his life in a few days or in a few weeks. That also applies to, to this spiritual sphere. Most of us are not paying attention to the spiritual sphere as if it doesn't exist. Most of us think 
of our existence in three dimensions only. We only look at the physical material aspect of the existence. So there is only height, width, and depth. But there is no fourth dimension. That's the spiritual dimension. But if someone could be, could be looking so good to you, so muscular, so healthy, and he has some disease that's about to destroy all of this, that he, about, he's about to collapse within a few days, or a few weeks, or a few months. The same applies to us in, in the spiritual sphere. We could look good, like you know, making you know, the, the works of the people of paradise. We fast, we pray, we go to Hajj and Umrah, but we're not paying attention to the diseases that afflict our heart, and then those diseases will overtake the heart. And once the heart is overtaking, you, we are doomed, we're destroyed. So that is what the Hadith is telling us. The, and that is what the Hadith is trying to warn us from. Don't take it for granted. Don't feel too safe. Don't think that because I, you know, I look a certain way or I'm acting a certain way that I am guaranteed a path to paradise. Don't ever think this way. Because the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith said, التقوى ها هنا وأشار إلى قلب صدره ثلاثا. Taqwa is here, and he pointed to his chest three times. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, بحسب المرء من الشر أن يحقر أخاه المسلم. It is enough evil for someone to despise his fellow uh, Muslim. What does it mean it is enough evil? بحسب المرء من الشر. It's enough evil. It's enough for what? It's enough to destroy you. That it's enough evil. Enough. What, what would evil be enough for? What would evil be enough for? To destroy you. بحسب المرء من الشر. But we're, we, we, we don't pay attention to this. And we do this, you know, oftentimes amongst ourselves. We do this and we don't pay attention to it. But the Prophet warned us. You're not going to be able to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I was not told, I was not informed. You were told, you were informed, you were warned, but you didn't pay attention because it was too much for you to handle this issue. Because you, this, you wanted to take the easier route. And the easier route is to grow your beard. And I'm not belittling the, 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 the issue of the beard or any of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ or the commands of the Prophet ﷺ. It is a command of the Prophet ﷺ. Grow your beards. Uh, I, but, but, but it is not enough. It is easier. You basically wake up one day and say, you know what? I am not shaving anymore. And that's it. And then you don't shave. And then you grow your beard, and sometimes you know it, it could actually make you look more handsome or something, and then it becomes like second nature, and that's it, you're done with it. So it's easy, it's easier. It is easier than to take care of any of your weaknesses, any of the weaknesses of your heart, because those are not just like a one-time decision. This is an ongoing struggle with your heart. An ongoing struggle with your heart. The Prophet ﷺ explained this to us, this ongoing struggle. In a hadith that's reported by Tabrani from Abi Sa'id al-Khudrayi anhu, and it is traced authentically all the way up to Hudayfa. So it has been reported from Abi Sa'id al Khudrayi that the Prophet said, Al Qulubu Arba'a. There are four different types of heart. Qalbun Ajrad, Fihi Sirajun, Yuzhir, 
وَسِرَاجُهُ فِيهِ نُورُ A heart that is pure, a heart that is pure, أَجْرَ tajarrud, a heart that is pure, it has a shining lamp inside it. And that shining lamp is the light of faith inside that heart. The light of faith inside that heart. So it is a heart that is capable of discerning between right and good. It is a heart that is accepting of all goodness and a heart that rejects all evil because it has its own light, inherent light within this heart. And it is pure and transparent. وَقَلْبٌ أَغْلَفْ and that's the heart of the believer. And a heart that is sealed. And the seal is tied. That is the heart of the disbeliever that rejected the truth in entirety, did not want to listen, did not want to, you know, uh, pay attention whatsoever to the truth. It's a heart that's sealed, not only that it is sealed, but also the seal is tied. There is no way for any light to make it through to that heart. وَقَلْبٌ مَنْكُوسٌ عَرَفَ الْحَقَّ ثُمَّ أَنْكَرْ فَذَلِكَ قَلْبُ الْمُنَافِقِ And a heart that is turned upside down. It recognized the truth and then rejected it, and that is the heart of the hypocrite. A heart that is turned upside down, it recognized the truth, and then it rejected it. So some goodness came into that heart. It recognized the truth. And then it was turned upside down and lost all of that. And now, since it is turned upside down, can any goodness settle in it. No, it's like a cup that's turned upside down. No goodness can sit in it. And that's the heart of the munafiq. وَقَلْبٌ مُصَفَّحًا A heart that is mixed. فِيهِ مَادَّتَانِ مَادَّةُ إِيمَانٍ وَمَادَّةُ نِفَاقٍ It has two elements. An element of iman, an element of nifaq. فَمَثَلُ الْإِيمَانِ فِيهِ كَمَثَلِ الْبَقْلَ the likeness of Iman in this heart is like a, a sprout that is being supplied by goodly water. Do you see this example? Like a sprout that is being supplied by goodly water. And the likeness of Nifaq is like a, an ulcer that is being supplied by blood and pus. Blood and pus. فَأَيُّهُمَا غَلَبَتْ غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْهِ فَأَيُّهُمَا غَلَبَتْ Whichever of those two elements, whichever of those two supplies, these are like two tributaries feeding into your heart. Two tributaries meeting into your heart and feeding into your heart. One bringing in the goodly water and one bringing in the blood and pus. Whichever one of these two overtakes the other, it will overtake that heart. Now, our responsibility is to be, on, to be guarding on the posts of our heart at all times, to be watching this tributary, this supply of pus and blood that is coming into our hearts. Whenever you fall into any action of, you know, hypocrisy, showing off, you know, uh, acting arrogant, deceptful, uh, proud, any one of these, then that is pus. That is blood and pus coming into your heart. Unless you're ready all the time to, to defend your heart and to, to, to clear your heart of 
this element that is invading it and to allow more of the goodly water to come in, to make up for those failures, to make up for those shortcomings and mistakes quickly and promptly, allow more good water to come in. Because if you allow the pus and blood to overtake the good water and then you die, you're doomed. So you should be on the posts of your heart guarding all the time uh, so that you are not overtaken by that destiny. That is the benefit of this hadith. And that is the importance of watching your heart and attending to your heart and taking this struggle seriously. Today, inshallah, we will just take a couple more hadith. Uh, and tomorrow we will talk about how to actually begin the walk towards purification. But I have to tell you that part of the importance of paying attention and being busy with this and being reminded of this all the time and reminding others of this is that this is a very consequential issue. This is a very serious issue. This is a very personal and individual pursuit. And you have to do it for yourself, on your own, because no one will be able to fix your heart for you. And the, the other thing is, this particular issue, you will not find good doctors for this particular issue. In our times, we live in, in times that are very tough. We live in times that are very removed, distant from the Prophet ﷺ, the companions, the righteous generations. We look around ourselves and we don't find good doctors that can treat us because the doctors are sick. Can you imagine this? You're living in a village where you have a disease and everybody around you has the disease. And then you look for the doctors and you find out that the doctors have the disease. Isn't that frightening? It should be frightening for all of us. And that's exactly what we go through. We all have these diseases in our hearts and we look around us and we find the people having the diseases, which doesn't make us any more comfortable because that will not save us on the day of judgment. The fact that everybody else was also sick will not save us on the day of judgment. Allah told us, إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Except for those who return to Allah with a heart that is sound. It is your responsibility. And Allah knows that you could do it. Because لا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وَسْعَاهَا Allah does not burden any soul beyond its capacity. So don't think that you'll go back and say, everybody around me was sick and the doctors were sick. You will have to do it for yourself, even if the doctors were sick. So the speakers, those who speak about this issue, they are also sick. And the, the fact that they speak about it does not mean that they have figured it out on a practical level, figured it out for themselves. <laughs> When you point out a station to the people, you tell them, here is the station of muraqaba, watchfulness. Here is the station of tawbah, repentance. Here is the station of tawakkur, reliance. Here is the station of raja, hope. Here is the station of khawf, fear. Here is the station of, you know, uh, sidq, truthfulness. Here is this or that station. And you point out the station to them. It does not mean that you arrived. It just means that we all have to keep talking about this issue to remind ourselves of the journey that we have to begin or the journey that we need to complete and keep on pointing out to each other that we are far from the, the, our, our uh, desirable destination, the, the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and 
you know, that uh, complete devotion, ikhlas al-kamil, lillah azza wa jal. So, another hadith about the types of hearts that the Prophet sallallahu told us, and this hadith was reported by Bukhari and Muslim from Abi Musa al-Ash'ari. The Prophet sallallahu likened the hearts to different types of land. He said, مَثَلُ مَا بَعَثَنِ اللَّهُ بِهِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْعِلْمِ كَمَثَلِ الْغَيْثِ الْكَثِيرِ أَصَابَ أَرْضًا فَكَانَ مِنْهَا نَقِيَّ أَنْ بَتَتِ الْكَلَأَ وَالْعُسْبَ الْكَثِيرِ وَكَانَ مِنْهَا أَجَادِبْ أَمْسَكَتِ الْمَاءِ فَنَفَعَ اللَّهُ بِهَا النَّاسِ فَشَرِبُوا وَسَقَوا وَزَرَعُوا وَكَانَ مِنْهَا طَائِفَةٌ أُخْرَى إِنَّمَا هِيَ قِيعَان لَمْ تُمْسِكِ الْمَاءَ وَلَمْ تُنْبِتْ الْكَلَأَ فَذَلِكَ مَثَلُ مَنْ فَقُهَا فِي الدِّينِ وَنَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ بِمَا بَعَثَنِي بِهِ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْعِلْمِ فَعَلِمَ وَعَلَّمْ وَمَثَلُ مَنْ لَمْ يَرْفَعْ بِذَلِكَ رَأْسَ وَلَمْ يَقْبَلْ هُدَى اللَّهِ الَّذِي أُرْسِلْتُ بِهِ So the Prophet ﷺ said the likeness of the guidance and knowledge that Allah sent me with is like a goodly rain, abundant goodly rain, غيث, abundant goodly rain that fell on a land. Part of this land was fertile. It held the water and it grew grass and vegetations. So that is for you know, the people and their livestock. And part of this land was ajadib, infertile, yet it held the water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefited the people from that water that this land held. It's a land that is solid, but it is infertile. So at least it contained the water. If the water did not seep through it, it contained the water for the benefit of the people. فَسَقَوْ they, they give water to their livestock. وَشَرِبُوا And they drank themselves. وَزَرَعُوا And they also took water for irrigation of their lands. And then a third type of, a third part of this land وَكَانَ مِنْهَا طَائِفَةٌ أُخْرَى إِنَّمَا هِيَ قِيعَانٌ Sandy plains. Do you know the sandy plains? You know, the, the plains that are completely made out of sand. لَمْ تُنْبِتْ لَمْ تُمْسِكِ الْمَاءِ It did not hold the water. وَلَمْ تُنْبِتْ الْكَلَأِ And it did not grow any vegetations. So basically the water fell on the land and it just went through it. فذلك, and then the Prophet ﷺ said, فَذَلِكَ مَثَلُ مَنْ فَقُهَا فِي الدِّينَ That is the likeness of someone who had a good understanding of the deen and benefited with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent me with. So he learned for himself and he taught the people. So he benefited himself. That is the first type of land which is the fertile land that was able to grow its own vegetations, benefited himself, and was able to hold the water for the benefit of others. That's the best type of land. وَمَثَلُ مَنْ لَمْ يَرْفَعْ بِذَارِكَ رَأْسَ And the other example or parable is the one who did not pay attention, uh, who was heedless and did not pay attention and did not benefit from the guidance with which I was sent. What about the third type of land? Who is that? Well, the, the, the first is the one who was able to learn and benefit for himself and act upon the guidance of the Messenger وسلم, and spread it. And the last is the one who did not accept anything, sandy plains. The water, did not hold the water, did not benefit himself, did not benefit others. So that's the worst type. And the, the type in the middle, the Prophet وسلم, did not mention it because it was obvious. It is the type of people that hold the water for the benefit of others, yet they don't benefit from the water they are holding. So it's the type of people that you know, preach and talk and speak and exhort and advise. And then the people may benefit from all of this, but they themselves don't benefit from their own uh, preaching. So, this hadith about the, these different types of the heart makes us, you know, 
think of how we make our hearts of the first kind. And in order for you to make your heart of that first kind, the fertile land, there are two things that you need to make. You need to, to do. You need to weed out your land, and then you need to fertilize it. And that's what we will be talking about tomorrow, inshallah, how to weed out the land and how to fertilize it. But I told you that I will be mentioning two of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu So the other hadith is about, you know, it's like a, an introduction to tomorrow's talk about weeding out your land. The first thing that you need to do when you, when you try to weed out your land is to recognize your greatest weaknesses. And those vary. The weaknesses vary. The shaitan's Trojan hordes into your heart vary because we are different. And for some people, the shaitan, the shaitan knows your, your, your weak spot in the heart. But there are certain things that afflict us all, human beings. And the Prophet ﷺ told us of those things. There is a, a beautiful hadith reported by Bukhari a Muslim from Anas and Abi Hurairah anhum, in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Yahram ibn Adam wa yashibbu ma'ahu thnatan al-hirsu ala al-mal wa al-hirsu ala al-umur. The son of Adam would grow senile, but two things would always stay youthful in him. Two things will always stay youthful in him. Eagerness for wealth and for longevity. Eagerness for wealth and longevity. Life. So Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, said something very beautiful about this. He said, these are the two things that got Adam out of paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Taha, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ قَالَ يَا آدَمُ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ شَجَرَةِ الْخُلْدِ وَمُلْكِ اللَّا يَبْلَى Because life without money is also could be a life of difficulty and hardship. So shaitan said to Adam, فَوَسْوَسَ إِلَيْهِ الشَّيْطَانِ The shaitan whispered to him, he said, يَا آدَمْ هَلْ أَدُلُّكَ Should I not tell you should I not tell you of the tree of eternity and milk or wealth that will never vanish, that does not vanish? So not only that you will have eternity, but you will have eternity in wealth. You will be, you will live forever, and you will live wealthy. So that is how he got him out of paradise. These two things, eagerness for wealth and longevity and eternity. So Ibn Qayyim then said, and he does not go back until he gives them up. And he does not go back until he gives them up. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us in Surah At-Tawbah. In Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had purchased from the believers their wealth, their lives, and their wealth in exchange for paradise. So these are the two things that you need to give up. And that is the biggest struggle our biggest struggle in, uh, in this life, without which we don't go back to our uh, land of safety, to the land of safety, to our hometown. Al-Jannah was our hometown, and we were just removed from it. So if we, try, if we ever want to go back to our hometown, we have to pay that price. Jazakumullah khairan. Tomorrow, inshallah, we'll talk about the rest of this. Subhanakallah, inshallah, and stuff it right away. Thank you.
مثل نوره كمشكاة فيها مصباح 